Today on The Joy of Editing, we're taking a look at the Color Effects Detail Extractor Filter. And it's also the day I announced the contest winner for the full suite of DxO software. So stay tuned to the end to find out who won. Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. The Detail Extractor Filter is one of my favorites here in Color Effects. If you ever want to bring out some beautiful detail in your images, this is that go-to filter. And please make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video because I will be announcing the winner for the entire suite of DxO software. Before we jump in, if you'd like to pick up Nick Collection 8 or any DxO software, use my affiliate links in the description below. New customers can save 15% with my promo code Dave Kelly. That's all one word, Dave Kelly, at checkout. Using those links also helps support the channel, so thanks. Today we're diving into the Detail Extractor and Color Effects, a powerful filter that brings out hidden texture and fine detail in your photos. I already have the filter open here in Photoshop, but you can also use Color Effects as a standalone app or launch it with other compatible software. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now, first off, you'll notice we have a detail extractor slider. If I take this slider and drag it to the right, we're going to bring out that detail. It's working with the micro contrast of this image. See that detail coming out? Now, if you push it really hard like this, it's going to give you that ugly, garish look. You don't want that. So be careful. Pull it back. And it's also going to really open up those shadows. In other words, they're going to get lighter. So you got to be careful. And for this image, I think maybe right about here should be pretty good. You'll also note that we have effect radius. This is a drop down. Right now it's on normal. And that's where it is set by default. So let's click the drop down. Now, if I hover over fine, you can see what it's doing. It's doing more like a sharpening effect, so that may be what you're going for. This is normal, which is generally what you're going to use, and this is large. It's looking for larger areas of detail. For this image, I think I'll use normal. Whenever you use this filter to bring out detail, you're going to lose contrast. So let's add some more contrast back in. So I'll take the contrast slider, and we'll start to drag it to the right. And just enough to make it look more natural. And I think right about there should be good. Now, that might be a little too much detail, but I want to make sure you can really see it in this tutorial. So I'm going to leave it up there. After adding some extra detail, you may notice you're losing some saturation in the image. And that's what the saturation slider is for. We can use it to bring back some saturation. And for this image, I think, you don't want to overdo it here, but let's, let's just give it a little bit of saturation, maybe right there. Now, you also have shadow and highlight protection sliders. These are basically masking tools. You can mask out the shadows or the highlights from the adjustment if needed. And for this image, I really don't need it. But what do you think? That looks pretty nice. And you also have this opacity slider. So if you pull it the whole way off at 0%, you're seeing the original image. And then you can just blend your effect into the image. But I always leave mine up at 100%. And if I need to back off on my adjustment, I can always use layer opacity in Photoshop. And you may be thinking, boy, the rocks and everything looks great. You brought out some really nice detail, but your sky, Dave, is horrible. You brought up all the noise, all the detail in that noise, and you're right. But we're going to fix that with a control point. Let me show you how. Come down to your local adjustments. Click this button right here. This will let you add a control point. Now, here's a little tip. We don't want to just add a control point. We want a negative control point to take the effect away from the sky. So what I'll do is I'll hold down my option key. That's the shortcut. Hold the option key down and click. See the little minus comes up when you do that and click. You'll drop a negative control point. And now here's what I like to do after that. You can click this button to see the actual mask or click this button to see all of the masks. Now, in this case, we're probably going to need more than one control point. So I'll click this button. And now we can see the black area, which will conceal the adjustment from right here. But we can go ahead and adjust this and make this better. First off, we want to make a bigger click on this slider and drag it to the right. See how the control point gets larger? And I'm going to go to maybe that size right there. And now notice that we have luminance and chrominance. So you can adjust these. This point right here, 
determines what the luminosity value is here at this area as well as the chrominance value. So we can adjust it. So let's take the luminosity slider, drag it to the right. That's the wrong way. I'll drag it to the left. And you see how I'm really tightening up this mask. And I think right about here looks pretty good. Now we'll adjust chrominance, which is targeted to the blue of the sky. And if you go too far, you're going to go into your rocks and you don't want that. So right about here, you see the rocks are getting the full effect. Now it's also affecting other areas. So what we can do is if you hold down your option or alt key, hold that down and click and drag. This we will pull out another mask. You see what I'm doing here and I can pull it down into here. Now let's readjust luminance. Okay, maybe right about there and chrominance. You see how we're taking out the sky, but we're keeping it in all the rocky areas. That's pretty cool. Now, if you'll click this button again, you're back to your image. And now we are no longer affecting the sky. Let me shut off the detail extractor. Here's before and here's after. Pretty cool. Now for me, I would just click apply. That would send this back to Photoshop. I have one more example for you. Anytime you want to pop out some detail, this filter is your go-to filter. Now, what I want to do on this flower image is pop a little bit of detail out on this rose. I'll move this detail extractor slider to the right, pulling out detail. I'm looking at the rose, and maybe let's start out right about here, but look at the background. Man, is that ugly. Let's not worry about that yet. On the effect radius, we'll click on the drop down. This is normal. Now let's hover over fine. Now look at the flower. Don't look at the rest of the image. On fine, I think we're pulling out really nice detail for this flower. I think this flower needs fine compared to normal or large. Just hover through the three and see which one you like. And then I'll click on fine. Now I think the effect is too strong. So let's, I'll take it the whole way off and let's build it up slowly. Just look at the flower. It's a delicate flower. We don't want to give it too much detail. Maybe right about there. I'll shut off the extractor. Here's before, here's after. I think that's good. Now let's work on getting that garish look out of the background. Let's add a control point, but this time I don't want a negative control point. Let's click the control point button and I'm going to click right here and add a control point. Now that's a positive control point. And as you can see, the effect is gone right now from the background. I'll only use one control point, so I'm going to click this button right here so we can see the mask. And you can see what it's doing. Now, I'm going to teach you something here. This is a really cool little trick. Right now, if I move this around, see that center dot in the control point right there? It's looking at luminosity and chrominance values. So you see what's happening there? I want to go right in the center of the flower, like right here. And here's my tip for you. Take luminance drag it the whole way to the left, and the same for chrominance, drag it to the left, and now we're left with a white circle revealing just the flower. We also have diffusion. So right now we have full diffusion, in other words, the amount of blur that transitions off. I'll drag it the whole way into the left, and you can see we have a circle with just a slight amount of diffusion. And so I'll take this diffusion slider, watch what happens when I start to drag it to the right. See how it starts to expand? for some nice feathering, which will be a nice natural adjustment. And so I'm thinking feathering right about there should be good. Now let's go ahead and click this button to see the image again. Okay, and if you want to, you can adjust the size of the radius of the circle. Let's maybe make it a little bit bigger and then we can always move it around like that. And now let me shut off detail extractor. Here's before and here's after, see that detail? And then if it's too strong, we can back it off or maybe give it a little more for the video to make sure you can see it. Let me pull it up a little bit extra here so you can really see it there. Really, that's too much, but you know what I'm saying. I want you to see it. Let's give it a little bit of contrast, not much, just a tiny wee bit like that. And don't forget, you have saturation. It's at 6% by default. For this flower, I think it's good. I'm not going to touch it. And don't forget, you have shadow and highlight protection in case those shadows and highlights are being affected too much by the filter adjustment. Let's see a before and after. I'll uncheck the detail extractor filter. There's before and there's after. Pretty cool. Only affecting the flower. Now, please leave comments and questions. I'd really love to hear from you. And while you're at it, don't forget, please like, share, and subscribe. This really helps to promote my YouTube channel. So when you do that, I give you a very big thanks. And now for the contest winner. And the winner is Photon Sun Pixels. You have won. Now, here's how to claim your prize. 
In either this video or the Nick 8 Color Effects Pro contrast filter where I announced the contest video, either one will work. Just go to the description of the video, click on more. You got to click more to open up that description and scroll down through. You're going to find this contact me link. Click on that. And what you need to do is give me your name, your email address, because I'm going to have to send you the links to the software as well as all of the licensing. Just for clarity, here are the instructions. Don't forget, click the contact link in this video's description. I showed you how. Send me an email using that link. This is important. Include your YouTube username so I can confirm it matches the winning comment. Once I confirm it, I'll reply with your download links and license codes. Here's a reminder for you. Only use the contact link in the description. Please don't share your info in the comments. You don't want people getting your info. So only use the contact link. That will email me directly. Congratulations, Photon Suns Pixels. I'm glad you won. I'll be doing more of these giveaways, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future contests. Big thanks to DxO for supplying the software for this giveaway, and just so you know, this video isn't sponsored. Thanks everyone for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon so you never miss a tutorial. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.